I'm uh, Nick Bostrom, I'm a professor at Oxford University where um, I direct the Future of Humanity Institute. Assuming science and technology continues to progress, we will find ways to generate general intelligence in machine substrate. And that at some point after that we will have machine superintelligence, machines that exceed human intelligence in all domains. If we develop um, machine superintelligence, there is a great chance that they will become extremely powerful, uh, basically for the same reasons that the human species is very powerful today compared to other animals. Um, it's not because we have stronger muscles or sharper teeth, but because our brains are slightly cleverer than, than those of our great ape ancestors, we now have been able to invent all these other technologies in the complex social organization that makes the human position on our planet special. To the point where now the fate, say, of the gorillas depends a lot more on what we humans do than on what the gorillas do themselves. For basically the same reasons, if we develop machines that radically surpass us in general intelligence, then they might be in a position to shape the future uh, according to their preferences. So there are two big problems if you want some beneficial outcome from the intelligence explosion. So one is obviously the technical problem of how to develop intelligent machines in the first place. And that's a problem that tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people around the world are contributing towards in different ways. Then there's this other problem, which is the control problem. Um, the problem of if and when you could build a seed AI that would grow into super intelligence. How could you ensure that it would be safe and beneficial? That's a very neglected problem. Maybe half a dozen people are still working on that worldwide. But the key thing for humanity is that we, if we're going to solve both of these problems, that we solve them in the correct order. Like we've got to have a solution to the control problem before somebody figures out a solution to the problem of how to make in machines intelligent. So I've long been interested in certain future technologies because it looks to me that they will be among the key determinants that might shape not just this century but all future for earth originating intelligent life. I think that this century or maybe the next will be a key bottleneck if we make it through then our descendants might colonize the universe and there might be these enormous values coming um, to be realized. And you can run some rough calculations of that if you figure that there are billions of galaxies with billions of stars each, each of which could live for billions of years. There's just like an enormous amount of potential value in the future. And I think that whether that future will in fact be realized or not might very well depend on some of the choices we make in this century, particularly whether we manage to be savvy and responsible in the way we develop certain key technologies, uh, AI, uh, chief among those, but also synthetic biology and nanotechnology and a few others. And I'm hoping that the book will stimulate some of the brightest minds of our generation and the generation to come to devote themselves to this control problem. And that that will increase the chances that if and when we do get to an intelligence explosion that we will manage to achieve a controlled detonation, an outcome that will actually be beneficial. Um, so that's one of the purposes of writing this book. Also to build more awareness in general, so that when people are thinking about the future, that they can have a more informed, more realistic picture of, of what the, the opportunities and problems are. I think there are a lot of these implicit assumptions in the way we conceive of the long term and it has ramifications for technology policy today and other choices we make today. And by you know, focusing some more critical thinking on some of these underlying, often unchallenged assumptions, I think we can become wiser um, in, in how we plan for the future. Particularly since there is so little, actually, so, so little care about the future. It's important that we try to allocate that limited amount of funding or manpower or, or basic caring in, in, in something uh, more closely optimal a way than, than we, we have done so far. Well, for me, science and philosophy are really overlapping parts of the same uh, continuum. So I, I did, uh, in, in, in my student days, theoretical physics um, and computational neuroscience and, and, and mathematical logic as, as well as philosophy. And, uh, in my research group, we have mathematicians, philosophers and scientists working very closely together. Um, I think that academia has a way to try to force a compartmentalization where each discipline has its own norms and standards and journals. But for many of these really big challenges for humanity, 
that really cut across disciplines. And, and you need somehow to pull together insights from many different fields to do some intelligent thinking about them.